What is up, everybody? Welcome to Toffee Blues USA, your source for all things Everton, American style. So uh, I'm Jerry, coming to you recorded from uh, Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Joining me today, we have new friends. It's great. We have a new friend. His name is Cole. He is from the Kentucky Evertonians. And yeah, uh, he's, he's jumping in with me today. So Cole, thanks so much. Nice to meet you. Thank you for having me. Nice to meet you as well. Uh, so Cole, um, we only talked a little bit ahead of time because I was hoping if you had some kind of crazy information to spring on me, you'd get a genuine reaction instead of me having to reproduce it. But uh, so where are you from? And, uh, you know, talk about your uh, your supporters group Absolutely. over in Kentucky. So, yeah. Yeah. So so I'm from Louisville, Kentucky. Um, we started about 2018 is when we kind of uh, finalized the group and, and went live with it. Um, for a while, it was just me and uh, two other gentlemen um, watching the games kind of just sporadically every now and then. Uh, but 2018 is really when we decided to, to go live with it. Um, and slowly, uh, we just started to build our group. Um, Twitter was a huge success building that Twitter group. Um, there had been a couple Everton groups here and there that we kind of reached out to. Um, most of them were inactive. Those were based in Kentucky, Southern Indiana, um, kind of the surrounding areas. And um, yeah, we just established this social media presence. Um, we had been going to a couple different uh, bars to watch the matches. Uh, we, we kind of picked one. Um, it's Saints Pizza Pub in Louisville. Um, and it's also a Spurs bar, unfortunately, but we make it work. Um, so we kind of have a fun uh, Saints Derby every um, twice a year, I guess. So every season where um, the Spurs fans will be there, we'll be there, and it's really awesome. Um, but as our groups go, uh, grown, the uh, the owner of, of Saints has kind of given us our own little cubby um, area at the bar, which has been really fun um, to kind of have that as our spot. And yeah, just over the group, uh, over the years, our group has grown. Um, and something really exciting is this past season, um, the 2020-21 season, we had significant interest uh, from Lexington, Kentucky, which is about an hour <clears throat> and 15 minutes away from Louisville. Huh. Um, and so, uh, yeah, got a couple of guys um, in the Lexington area to kind of take over, lead that. Um, and they've been having pretty consistent match day meetups um, this season now that, um, you know, COVID's gotten to a point where people now feel safe going to those meetups. Um, and so they're at Shamrocks um, in Lexington. And there's two locations. Um, it is the Patch and Drive location. Um, so, yeah, they, they even did a Monday meetup uh, this, this week for the Burnley match, which, which, which I think was a first, the first uh, weekday meetup for Lexington. Um, just so happens that's also Spurs bar as well. Um, but they make it work too. Yeah. So we actually have one member who um, the wife is an Everton fan, husband's a Spurs fan. So um, that's pretty cool. But yeah, we've got the wife at least. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it, it's been very exciting. Uh, we have grown to about 80 members now. Um, in our Facebook group. Hopefully over the next couple of months, we'll start to see uh, more show up to um, Saints and Shamrocks respectively. Right now, we kind of hover around 10 usually per match. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's very cool um, to watch the group grow. Um, in fact, on Monday, uh, I sent out a tweet um, with the Everton match day um, hashtag and it got on the board at Goodison um, got sent that by a supporter that I guess was at the match um, and so that that was definitely a hit in our Facebook group seeing um, you know our club um, supporters group on the big screen at Goodison uh, was super super cool that would be that's awesome so uh, so really really quick uh, you're in Louisville um, just I want to I want to I want to get the pronunciation right because I feel like people in, in, in that city have a certain way of pronouncing it and I don't want to screw it up anymore yeah I mean it's okay it's just kind of like a subtle uh, Louisville Kentucky Louisville. it's just kind of Louisville yeah it's it's different but Louisville Louisville 
Louisville. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, they're they're definitely they're. I think our you know our visitor center sells the shirts that has all the different pronunciations nice. of Louisville. So the, uh, the phonetic spellings of them. So so you're there uh, really quick about Saints Pizza. Anybody going to Saints? What do you recommend to eat at Saints? For anybody coming in there, or to drink, if you've got any like where you're like, this is what you do here, yeah. it's my favorite. Um, something cool about Saints in terms of the drinks, they have a lot of the local beers on tap. Um, really good selection. But uh, for for me, I'd probably say, and I think a lot of the group members would agree, the bourbon slushies. Of course, if you're you know from out of state, you come to Kentucky, it's a bourbon slush. So. Um, that's definitely a, a, a drink selection, but then um, they have really good pizza, of course. I'm a big fan of their buffalo chicken pizza, uh, but they have good wings. Uh, chicken tenders seems to be the staple of, of when people go there, and they have what they call halo sauce because, you know, Saints, halo. Uh, um, it's kind of a, <laughs> hard to explain. It's, a, it's on the spicier side, but it's their mm. signature sauce, uh, and it's, it's definitely a fan favorite. Cool. Very cool. So, and have you been able to get to Shamrocks in Lexington yet? Unfortunately, no. Um, like I said, uh, this is kind of the first season where on a consistent basis they've had meetups. Um, last year, it was really kind of spur of the, of the moment of where mm -hmm. we'd have maybe one member post, hey, I'm going to be at Shamrocks today. Or mm -hmm. um, there was another bar that they would go to for a while. Um, but we've been in discussion of having a um, either an away trip where Louisville goes to Lexington nice. or Lexington goes to Louisville. Um, but then also Frankfurt, the state capital, is about halfway. Um, mm -hmm. So we've, we've talked about doing a meetup um, halfway, but definitely oh. on the agenda for this season. Compromise. That's so nice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's, it's been awesome because we've been operating kind of under one umbrella of, of Everton, Kentucky. Um, but then we have the Louisville and we have the Lexington. But I um, mean, you know, our Facebook group kind of has conversation out of out of both groups. So awesome. Um, which I which I personally, uh, I think Carolina Toffees do it the same way, mm -hmm. um, you know, where they have different um, locations, um, but th they're under that same umbrella. So, yeah, I think I think there's a few there's a few that do that. And uh, mm -hmm. it just kind of makes sense, especially mm -hmm. like, you know, earlier days, you know, um, makes a lot of sense because you're you're still building the group, you're building the network. Um, it's very cool. Um, so, uh, so Cole, what do you, what do you do in your non Everton life in your life away from Everton? What, it, what is Cole doing like during the day? What, what's, uh, the, what's your thing? Everything's soccer really. Um, and that was true. Um, especially this last year, um, had a, a U10 team that I coached a local club um and then i i was playing three nights a week um i think indoor outdoor whatever so toned it back a little bit started my second year of law school um so i'm doing that during the day i'm also that's not toning it back a, cool cool man yeah that's yeah well in up. terms of soccer <laughs> oh, okay <laughs> in terms of soccer no more coaching for me no more gotcha. playing three days a week yeah. um I, i'm currently down so just one sunday league um, which is truly a Sunday league. Yeah. Um, it, it's, I, I enjoy it though. Yeah. Um, but kind of, you know, watch a lot of soccer today. I was uh, writing a paper while watching the uh, champions league match, which I picked the doozy of a match. I picked the PSG club Bruga oh, match. Wow. Which Bruga was totally on the front foot. Most of the match. So wild. Um, and yeah, uh, that that first showing of Mbappe, Messi, and Neymar kind of uh, disappointed a bit. Which yeah. I know Mbappe went off injured, um, but yeah, just just wasn't there. I think it, it's going to take some time, yeah. just naturally. But. Hard to live up to what you know is in this brain. I'll tell you that right now. That's that'll be the reality. Is that sure. it's a it's a job for them. Uh, mm -hmm. So um, where are you? What is what school are you at? Uh, I'm at the University of Louisville, um, so second at, year. Wow. Yeah, U of L. So, yeah. which uh, I guess our Lexington group, uh, most of them are going to be University of Kentucky, which which is a big deal in this state. I know. Um, so, <laughs> uh, 
Uh, yeah, I, I grew up a UK fan, actually. So, um, you know, that's part of part of the draw to Everton. No, not really. But the blue, the blue and yeah, the blue. I get it. Um, no, that that was not one of my reasons why. Like, I, I simply did not pick a club based off the color. But hey, um, you're allowed to let it influence you, though. OK, sure, sure. yeah, because my my club growing up that I played for Royal Blue. Yeah. You know what I mean? I wore Royal Blue and White. Those are my colors from age 10 through 18. You know what I mean? You get used to it. It feels like home. So certain stuff like that, I feel like it gets in your craw a little. It's contributing. It's not your main okay. thing, but it, you're allowed to go, you know, psychology, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Probably did, just a tad. But, uh, no, it is, it's funny. Uh, some of the viewers may have seen a little Twitter interaction I had. Um, there's the University of Kentucky has a popular blog, uh, Kentucky Sports Radio. And I guess the, uh, the founder uh, recently picked a Premier League team to support. Um, and he picked Spurs because they were, quote, traditionally not your powerhouse team, um, which I think probably would upset a lot of Spurs fans. I think it would, too. Um, and so I guess his, his theory was he didn't want to jump on a bandwagon, which, right. which to me I found interesting, uh, picking, you know, probably the highest following of Americans, um, you know, in, in Spurs. I would say, from my personal experience, I, I would say Spurs, at least in Kentucky, have quite the American following. So yeah, um, my brother picked Spurs. My boss is a Spurs fan. My buddy up in Virginia is a Spurs. Uh, <laughs> I, I know everybody, almost everybody I know is a Spurs or a Red. It's awful. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's that for me or, or United. Um, yeah. Lots of United yep. fans in Louisville. So but much. anyways, I fired out a tweet in response to his saying, you know, you made a mistake. You had the blue team, Everton, you know, everything you said you wanted in a club. But, you know, as we say, you know, born up red. So, yeah, uh, yeah, this just wasn't meant to be, you know. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, I, I those, these new interactions that people are having when they're, they send something out saying, hey, I'm I'm curious, what should I do? Um, I will say uh, Everton Twitter assembles like Voltron and uh, it's pretty impressive. The, the responses did. that we give. Uh, <laughs> And you know, yeah. most of them, I see the, they end up picking Everton. Like mm -hmm. it ends up working. Um, they they yeah. like that that passion. And um, I mean, I, I think a lot of that is fueled by the recent efforts of the club in America. Great. Um, and where fans now feel that connection to then reach out to other Americans, um, you know, North Americans and and say, hey, you really should support Everton, you know, kind of on the up and up in terms of, of that American outreach front. So they've done a good job in uniting a lot of these groups. And I will say people like yourself are also taking a, taking initiative to reach out and interact with other, with other Evertonians on, I mean, on Twitter, um, Twitter is where I usually see it. Um, but there's a lot of, I know the, um, you know, the fan forum is getting a lot of people together. It's, it's been impressive what I feel like there's been a lot of growth just in the past, like, two years, a uh, year or two. And I think this recent uh, happening in Florida really, uh, really was a big deal. That's what it is. I've I'm, I'm got the shirt on, the Florida Cup shirt. So. See, I, that was one of my questions coming up. I'm going to ask if you got to go. I did. Um, unfortunately, it was just for the second match, um, the Pumas match. Um, but, you know, I'll tell you what, kind of staying on the same topic, uh, you know, to me, the the trip wasn't I mean, obviously seeing Everton for the first time was was very cool. And kind of, you know, seeing those guys you watch on um, TV for years, uh, mm -hmm. just kind of there in front of you, um, quite the experience. But, um, you know, to me, the trip was about getting to meet all these people that have interacted um, yeah. virtually for for years. And yeah. um, just getting to meet them in person was just an absolutely incredible uh, experience. Um, and just, you know, it was funny, like some of these guys, you know, you just, you just know them from a discord and you don't know their real names. You just yeah. know they're, they're at, you know, whatever. Um, and so you kind of introduce yourself of, Hey, I'm this, Hey, I'm that. Oh, you know, nice to meet you. Here's our real <laughs> name. So that to me was, was so cool. And, 
I was bummed. Uh, I missed out on all the other events, but uh, just the match and kind of the pre-match tailgate um, was just an incredible experience. And, you know, yeah. just speaks volume for what this club is about, um, you know, and the efforts that they're making. What was the meeting that somebody you met where you were like, it blew your mind. You're like, oh, it's you from Twitter, <laughs> from Discord or from the blue universe where you know who who is it where you were just like it just blew your mind yeah to, to me that was uh ryan from the uh american toffee podcast yeah that would uh, be cool <laughs> he seems like yeah a good guy. I, I just it, we've interacted so much just like dming each other because I, I i really just enjoy his knowledge uh you he's, know different he's super smart the amount of football yeah. that he actually consumes is yeah is a lot Cause I, I mean, I don't, like you said, he, he consumes more than anyone else I know. So it's, it's nice kind of identifying a player that, you know, I, you know, very surface level and you say, Hey, what do you know? What are your thoughts on this guy? So um, yeah, just, just having talked to him over the past couple of years mm -hmm. um, on Twitter and whatnot, getting to meet him um, and, and, you know, just in person was just uh, mm -hmm. a very cool experience and, um kind of was one of those things where it was just like hey man like i'm cole he said oh cole and it was just it was just super cool yeah so yeah. It, was, it was like we've known each other for years but um you know that that was a, a cool experience and just a few others um you know that i that i had engaged with on twitter it was just such a cool experience but then all, all the people I'm, of course being you know ever kentucky um you know one of the the group heads for that um, just being in the the fans forum kind of North American supporter group um, mm -hmm. chat that we have uh, it was cool just meeting every one of those so and um, you know hats off to Tony um, he was a big um, I think a big factor in making Orlando work and, and making it work to the level it, it did um, so just hats off to him um, great job you know another guy that it was a great meeting so yeah he's a connector you know and uh, not even just that, but just the passion he's got for the club. He's an educator. Like every time I talk to him, I feel like he's teaching me more about the history of the club. He's just somebody who just knows. And uh, and he also understands that, you know, in the sense of the club, I'm, I'm still a young supporter, even though I may not look that. But in the in the sense of the club, you know, I mean, I'm like 2000, 2011, 2012, something like that. You know what I mean? Like I'm relatively young as sure. a supporter for Everton. Yeah. Um, so let's talk your Everton story. We need to, we need to have this. Um, yeah. uh, I'm always curious. For me, it, 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 we started talking psychology a little bit earlier, but I still, I, I'm always fascinated about what draws people to their teams. And uh sometimes you'll see trends about people choosing Everton and how it picks them and all kinds of stuff. So how are, how is Cole blue? So, uh, you know, I mentioned earlier, probably was inferred that I played soccer pretty much um, all my life, but um, really wasn't until high school. And, and this is like the one thing that I would totally go back and change. So for all you young soccer players, if you're listening, when a coach tells you you need to watch more soccer, watch more soccer. It's incredibly beneficial. Um, I found uh, from, you know, when I started to watch it to mm -hmm. the end of my, you know, playing career, um, it just helped my game. It helps you with runs. It helps you just with general awareness, your soccer IQ. Um, and so to me, like I said, it wasn't really until high school where I had a coach that I listened to and started to watch soccer. So yeah, naturally, um, was pushed to pick a team. Uh, one of my best friends at the time was a Chelsea supporter. Um, so it wasn't going to be Chelsea. Couldn't, you know, couldn't be Chelsea. No, you can't um, be <laughs> But he, I mean, I credit a lot to him. I mean, it was just a lot of, you know, sleepovers at his house to wake up the next morning super early and, and watch matches. Um, and it was the 13-14 season is when Everton caught my eye. Um, and, and that was Gerard Del Feu um, and Romelu Lukaku. Those two guys, uh, it was fun, pretty it was... much. And, and of course, you got Tim Howard. But yeah, um, first Everton kit was Del Feu, so it was was gutted when he left. 
Um, mm-hmm. He's one of those guys that I just wish we would give another chance. And he's yeah. standing it up in Italy right now. But good, good for him. I'm glad. But uh, yeah, those those two. I mean, that was an electric um, duo um, mm-hmm. to watch, and just just always you know so exciting. So um, to to high school me um, that caught my attention um and then just kind of slowly over the years i mean it's it's true just kind of um you just get this attachment and uh yeah that was that was my club um and and you know we talked about florida but um it's gotten to the point where i'm i'm constantly looking every month uh checking the flights seeing when i can when i can get this trip to goodison See, um, I, that was my next question. It's like, it's like, you know, man. No, so, yeah. so, so I, you haven't been able to go yet. Because I no, haven't either. Uh, so it's, went to <laughs> Europe. Went to uh-huh. Europe, but over the summer. So no matches. Uh, but yeah, I, I mean, got to get to Goodison. Um, and, and doing so, knowing that I'll need to go back to the, go to the new stadium. And um, just, just years after. So, um, but, you know, it's, it's. Yeah, I mean, it's it's something that it's on your bucket list. I think, yeah. you know, there's not a member in our group that's just like, got to get to Goodison, got to get to Goodison. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, I, yeah, as a hoping family, to do that as a family of four, and I've converted my entire family to being Everton supporters. So if I go without them, <laughs> I may have some issues. I may have some, because it already was like, super disappointing because i was gonna i'd have my tickets for florida all laid out and everything and i had to cancel because the documentary i was working on and Mm -hmm. but my family my kids were devastated when they found out that they couldn't go there if i end up going and i can't i'm in serious uh, i'm I'm just (laughs) it's bad so uh but it it, but that's the so it's gonna be more expensive it's you know with a family of four but um, yeah. but at the same time, um, it's going to be a hell of a moment. You know what yeah. I mean? As a I mean, bonding thing, Jesus Christ! <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Would that be the first abroad trip? Yeah, um, my, my no one in my family, uh, no, my neither my wife nor me, nor my kids or anyone, has ever traveled even outside of the country. Wow! And it's yeah. not by choice. My wife and I. We love the idea of travel. It's just we just never been we just never been in that position. It's like we're slowly oh. getting there. Like because I uh, in the past, you know, I had my own company and money was super tight. It's not as it's not as tight now because you know my job's a little bit, you know, doing a little bit more comfortable. Um, but yeah, we're thinking there's a possibility of, of uh, early early next year. So yeah, we're well, we're working I, on the passports. I, I will tell you the travel bug is real. Um, I, I did my it, first yeah. abroad trip in 2019. Um, and then, you know, of course the pandemic happened, so, um, yeah. couldn't travel and just been itching to go ever since. And what was your favorite uh, area, by the way, to totally interrupt? What was your favorite area? All I mean, all of Italy was awesome. Uh, okay. Budapest was great. Have an Everton story from Budapest. Um, <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't I mean, have I expected that. <laughs> we had, yeah, there was a, uh, a traveling, I guess, cause it was Euro qualifiers, I think. So, Wales played uh, in Belgium or not in Belgium, sorry, in, in Budapest or near Budapest. Um, and yeah, was that was at a kind of outdoor bar area and all these Welsh guys were there and um, just started talking to them and mentioned I was an Everton supporter and a couple of them were Everton supporters. What? And they, That's uh, awesome. <laughs> I, I think they were on the, uh, on the beverages though. Um, so try to I mean- get... Yeah, I mean, they're they're on holiday, so yeah. <laughs> one of them tried to give me their number uh, to kind of reach out whenever I whenever I came um, yeah. to you know to the area, and um, unfortunately, don't think that number uh, is, is quite right. But oh. um, <laughs> you know, oh. he was in Wales, so but yeah, it was just you know they're they're everywhere. I mean, um, mm. according to him, there's a big Welsh back the backing. Um, yeah, of everything, so I can believe it. I mean, they're not too, not too far away, right? Not too far uh, away yeah. at all. So Dang, it's, it's, that's awesome. Super jealous, super jealous, man. It was, it was a good time, but um, yeah, looking to go and 
uh, was, was kind of considering maybe even as soon as, as this December. Um, mm-hmm. but, Dude, um, awesome. it's the challenge, you know, find somebody to go with. So if any yeah. viewers have, um, traveled solo, uh, made the trip across and you have any pointers or general feedback, be greatly appreciated. Drop that in his goals. Twitter details should be listed below if you're watching this and if you're listening, yeah, it probably in the, is in the details of the uh, episode. So yeah. yeah. Just saying, Cole, are you the main admin on Kentucky Overtonians? Uh, yeah, I would say I, we, there's another um, gentleman that helps me out in terms of uh, Facebook events and stuff. Um, I generally run, well, I, I run all of our Twitter. Um, cool. And then we have, uh, like I said, a, a Lexington um, kind of lead, but um, him and I are pretty much in communication with uh, social media details. He'll, he'll tell me what to post and I'll post it, but he's usually the one that kind of organized the meetups for Lexington. But I just want to make sure before I was like, Hey everybody send Cole a message. And then yeah, like, no. actually Harvey handles that. Uh, just <laughs> saying, uh, but yeah, I didn't want to be given that. That'll get to me. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Cool. Very cool. Um, so I've got my, Oh, um, no, I'll get to that in a minute. Uh, who's your favorite current Everton player? Oof. Um, long standing, probably Luca Dean. Um, just old reliable. I um, think he always, you know, can usually count on him to put in a good shift. Um, I know recently he's kind of been called into question um, by some. His mm-hmm. stats, I guess, suggest otherwise. Yeah, uh, I, I think he's fine, but you know. <laughs> I also, I think a lot of it has to do with just the new system. Agreed. Um, I, I think probably in, in terms of looking as a negative, he was probably relied on too much um, by former managers. So now I think he's maybe just not standing out as much, which obviously is good because you don't want to be one dimensional. You don't want to consistently just, oh, play the ball to your left back and have them cross it in the box all uh, day long. <laughs> so that, that may be why, but uh, yeah, I have definitely have a few Luca Dean kits, um, but oh, that's awesome. yeah, I mean, I just, I just think he's, you know, I think once uh, Seamus is done, I think he's, he's the captain. He needs to be is he's just, yeah. I, I don't think there's much bad things you can say mm-hmm. about, Luca Dean so but uh some of them you know there's all these new players that are making quite the impression yes they are absolutely I think it's really interesting that De La Feu uh, is a big a big in- influence for you and your current favorite Everton player just is like a bizarre <laughs> doppelganger of De La Feu they look so much alike they do yeah they do <laughs> like different players I mean you know De La Feu was pretty They're flashy so and, yeah right? but um Dale Dale know, takes they, people in the dribble and Luca Dean likes to co- combine with others and get forward and move without the ball you know yeah, yeah. and it, it was probably uh, when I was in high school I was playing that attacking role and then slowly got pushed back to left back so maybe yeah. I've just taken a, a liking that position but um, that works I mean to be honest with you though I Luca Dean is a ridiculously reliable player and I'm a huge fan he's just I just I like players on our team that are just straight up rocks. Yeah. You know what I mean? No complaining. I mean, they do their, do their job, you know? Uh, and, and they're not, I mean, Duke, Luca Dean is not injury prone. He's not a prima donna. He's just, not you know, I know, wood. right, right. Hold on. <laughs> There's a frame. Okay. It's, uh, it. there, there we go. go. Bed frame. Yes. All right. So. You want to guess yeah. my number two though? Yeah. I, I, there's no way I'll be able to guess this. Oh, I mean, it's it's the same. It's the Kure. I mean, he he to me. Oh, okay. Just, See, I uh, was gonna guess Richarlison because I feel like everybody's. Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm not a Richarlison hater, but like, uh, you know, I'm not. I wouldn't consider one of my favorite players, but. See, uh, it, I feel like Decore is a. I can make a similar rationale for Luca Dean for the way you described yeah, him. Exactly. Now, I, I mean, I'll I'll admit, I, I think personally, in my view, Richarlison's our best player, um, but in terms of just, I mean, his antics can, sometimes I love him, sometimes I hate him, but it just depends on the antics. So. Tough relationship with that guy, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, um, I, 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 for one, will, you know, a lot of people it gets on their nerves, him going down easier, getting in people's face. I think you need that. Every, every squad needs a player like that. 
Um, some people called out his performance, you know, versus Burnley, which I'm sure we'll get to. Um, so maybe I'll hold that for now. But um, I, I don't know. I, I found him a tough guy to hate, but probably a tough I, guy to love as well. But I think he's he's one of those that you love him if he's on your team. You know, so absolutely. Um, another staple new guest question: Your favorite Everton goal? Ooh. That's a tough one. Um, goodness. Gosh, in recent time, that Rooney chip probably versus West Ham. It was West Ham, right? Yeah. Yeah, it was West Ham. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I mean, that was it's a good that one. was one of those general. I mean, will, will we see another goal like that in the next 10, 20 years? Probably not. It's um, yeah, it's absurd. Yeah. Very yeah. cool. Um I just threw in this extra question just because I feel like being a dumbass sometimes. Sometimes, <laughs> ha. Uh, your preference, Alcaraz or Cuco Martina? What's your preference? Gosh. <laughs> Cuco, Cuco's got a bit of a soft spot. I feel bad for the guy. Uh, I kind of feel bad for both of them because I feel like both of them were like very – hugely low cost options when we brought them in to kind of be backups and then they're forced into certain starting roles and, and poor Kuko has been forced to play, was forced to play on the left yeah i mean footed it's crazy his career was decent up until that but even like he couldn't even get in his national side after what Co and uh, coleman just mismanaged so many players so it's at this point it's like the guy that should not be spoken of like to me he's public enemy number one in terms of yeah I, i'll be honest i know i'm not i'm not going to get over kuman for a while i just think he's trying to think about how to put this politely but he just seems like an asshole you know it says he seems terrible i mean there's <laughs> yeah and there was rumors on Twitter whether or not it's true that you know recently of course he took the locker room away from you know king humor yes. Um, which, you know, not the best player, but you just don't do that as a manager. Um, like I said, unconfirmed reports that uh, Umtiti, he had him warm up on the touchline of a Heard about that. match just to get booed. And the try Pjanic, to the, the stuff about Pjanic too, with the lack of communication yeah, there. I mean, and, and the fact that he makes bench players train ridiculously intense at, if you didn't play in a game after a match and he doesn't watch the training. So he doesn't know how hard you're working. He doesn't know any of that. You know, I, I just don't know what kind of a manager hopes to have any kind of bond with their players. I just can't imagine he does. Yeah, I mean, there's there's a few managers that didn't get it right at Everton that I'd back. I mean, Marco Silva, definitely rooting for him. All the best for him yeah. at Fulham. Seemed like uh, a good guy. Roberto Martinez with, with the Belgium squad, you know. Absolutely. Hope he can achieve success with them. But, I mean, Koeman, I just it, – it's kind of nice seeing Barcelona – go on the down but <clears throat> yeah. yeah i'm with you um and uh last question before we move on i always ask this an everton player that is your personality anytime doesn't have to be current could be charles no, I'm just <laughs> yeah, you came out with that <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's uh, a, just it's just where you're like, yeah, that that player right there, that's my personality. Me as a player, right there. Oh, as a player. Oh, like uh, uh, do you know what I mean? Like, take list of an all time Everton player where you're like, my personality, closely, uh, yeah, that's me. So, yeah, like on the field or off the field. Eh, could be both. So, Either uh, one. Yeah, take it however I mean, you want. You know, some people like they say Coleman because, you know. Sturdy, maybe not necessarily, you know, uh, but he's he's willing leadership qualities. I, I would, not gonna yeah, take shit, I'll go with I'll go with Awobi. I mean, he, he seems like a really fun guy to be around, but uh, also kind of has a serious side to him. It seems and can kind of mm -hmm. uh, tune in and and get after it. But uh, you know, I enjoy all of his his social media and, and, and yeah, the, bean, like too. the bean the yeah. bean saga. <laughs> he just uh, he, he seems like he has a good time with life. Uh, but I mean, he also is just, I, I, that's somebody I, I'm admiring. I mean, he's 
hasn't had the easiest of years uh, no. with with the team, but I think and, and hopefully he'll just continue to kind of flourish under Rafa. So yeah, I mean, I I do feel like there's been growth already, which is mm. I've, I've said it on previous pods. I'm a big fan of players hitting hard times and emerging. I'm a huge Fair fan man. of that. Mm-hmm. Um, cool. All right, Cole. We're moving on. All right. Burnley review. Just got done watching the match again. Uh, but I would like to have your opening thoughts. Just just give a few things off the top of your head, and then we'll get a little bit more specific. Well, felt like taking a nap or, or going back and taking a nap for that first half. Yeah. Um, kind of one of those where you're at the pub and you're like, why am I here right now? Uh, hope we never play a back five uh, ever again. I've always – hoped that but I mean that's kind of probably a bit sarcastic but um and, and dramatic but uh that was just bad I mean that was yeah. really the first time I think we've seen that under Rafa from the start um and I think he'll acknowledge he got it wrong uh Godfrey I think started out in the middle of those three which mm. was very odd having Mina and and I mean I think Keen just in that off-centered position is just no just why I don't I don't it just made no sense so um I mean quickly address but you know again the game the match was under control for the most part um had a few decent opportunities in the first half but really was just boring kind of took me back a couple seasons and uh kind of looked like you know how we've been playing um not this season so being uh, being some being a guy who who watches a lot of a lot of football watches a lot of soccer okay Can you give a little, I mean, like I have my own ideas as to why he did that. Can you, can you give a little bit like taking his point of view a little bit to try to figure out, because he's a pretty, pretty sharp fella, right? Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I guess he he rationed that Burnley were going to throw a lot of guys forward and um, in terms of like, when they attack from the wide positions, they're going to cross it into two, uh, you know, strikers, uh, which, you know, they have big guys at that, but uh, mm-hmm. and I guess just the extra cover with three, but I mean, before the match, I was saying go, you know, four, four, three, three, um, which mm-hmm. is what we finished in. Um, but just, you know, put the bruisers in the middle and uh, you know, it's, I, I promise this, this is in riding somewhere. I said we need to put Dakure at the ten roll this match and let him go, yeah. which is you know where he really flourished that second half. But yeah, I mean it was just bad. Um, the goal we conceded, um, watching that back, I mean there was four guys on the back post to our two. I mean it was just, it, it just looked like it was something he threw together a day or two before, and which um, you know somebody said it. I forget who it was, but they they had trained it over that entire international break. Um, I don't know. It just, it, it, it just didn't make sense to me. It was poorly covered that goal, you know, rewatching it today, you know, yeah. I mean, I catches a little push in the back, but even if it doesn't happen, I still don't know if he gets to it. I no. didn't feel like anyone was in position to be able to defend that well at all. I feel like Coleman was the man who was behind yeah, and he wasn't going to get around and beat Ben me to that. So then you just have to sort of question positioning and marking, right? Yeah, which which it came from – it wasn't a set piece. It had gotten cleared just out of Just after the set piece, right? And then got swung in. It was just weird. I mean, there was four Burnley players, and it was kind of three, three uh, kind of in a line and then one kind of trailing. So Coleman was – kind of marking that last guy in the three and then also the guy on the back post and Yeri had the guy in the front. And so there was just, you know, two guys that were just open. Um, so, or, or at least one guy and then another guy that Coleman was kind of split between him and another. Um, but yeah, it was just poor. And, and hopefully that's just something we'll get sorted and, and just kind of stay away from that back three the rest of the season. Or, or if we're playing somebody like a, Man City, where I can see maybe going defensive five in the back, but just Burnley, it just didn't make sense. But so, so can I tell you my stupid theory? Sure. Yeah, and, let's hear it. 
crap all over it, Cole. Uh, <laughs> I haven't really said it out loud uh, to anyone except for my nine-year-old. We were just watching this a little while ago. So uh, I guess that was just to see how it, dumb it sounded out loud. Um, I guess we were talking about uh, Dave, David Hughes sent a question into the show last week uh, saying, you know, is Burnley a, a low key big test for us? Because they don't throw a lot of people forward. They'll, they'll bunker back. They don't, they'll give away possession. They'll just give you the possession, right? Was, was us going with three in the back and re- largely playing on the back foot the whole first half or a majority of it? I feel like we didn't really get anything going forward until 25 minutes in, by the way. It was mm. really yeah. tough. Was it our was it Rafa kind of forcing them to possess the ball and and us not going on the front foot and letting them get in a defensive rhythm? You know what I mean? Like that, that, would, just, that would yeah, that, that would make the most sense. Uh, I got nothing, me, I got so. nothing else, brother. You know what I mean? I can't yeah, I can't think of which, anything else. Which I mean, even then, I mean it didn't work. Uh I mean, I mean we, we, were, we, we were we t- were yeah we were technically one to one still with that formation right mm-hmm. until right, it was right before Gomez uh, came in, um, and it did it didn't work at all, um, right? So technically, but I was I was trying to yeah, figure I mean, it out, you know? Yeah, I think it was you know one nil when we were in that five in the back, and then we get a corner and Rafa prepares a sub, which credit to him making a change early in the match when it's not going right. Uh, we have, we have our, our past two managers did not do that. Um, and very reactive substitutes. Um, mm. But he, uh, and, and reactive, I mean, when you're two nil down in the 80th minute and you're saying, Oh, better, that, that better drove change me nuts, something. Man. That drove you me know? so nuts. Yeah. So he, he makes the decision. I think we get a corner at one nil to take Godfrey off for uh put gomez on then we equalize still goes with the substitution yeah um and that's when you know godfrey comes off and then from there i mean we're just that electric uh that's six minutes minutes. good night (laughs) it was absurd i couldn't get over that i mean energy i mean number one we had momentum momentum right there's that number two the crowd is back in it because they were quiet right so momentum crowd and all of a sudden we're we've got an extra guy in the middle pushing you know pushing forward and decore can get farther forward now too and he's creating stuff on the break it was really fun and he almost scores a freaking goal yeah you know it was this far offside i mean we were we were at saints that day our our group was and Mm -hmm. it is it is a very kind of casual place of where you know people just go get drinks after work and so there, there was people there, uh, yeah. you know, at 3, 45, 4 o'clock when we were there. And, I mean, they must have thought, what the heck are these guys doing? Because we're in our little, like, cubby. Yeah. And, I mean, just that – I mean, we celebrated the fourth goal, the Curé's goal, like it was a goal. Uh, the, it, the one on all sides. So. But the thing is, is if momentum's going, I would still have been happy that it happened anyway. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's big. Yeah. That's- <laughs> so, I mean, we're just uh, – these people must have been thinking, like, these – american soccer supporters because it's big i mean it's a big football bar and they must have just been thinking you know what the heck but i mean it was just 10 minutes of pure joy and delight and just i mean those goals like we haven't seen a screamer like that uh in in a while and then just that fast breath i mean gosh everything that you want just great to see michael king get a goal um his performances have been, you know, I think almost past questionable. They've been very poor um, mm-hmm. to start the season, but, you know, good to see him get a goal and yeah. um, you know, push through. Yeah. Who do you feel like had a, let's, uh, you know, I want to, want to wrap up our Burnley review here, but I want to, uh, who do you think had a, had a good game, strong players for that one? Like your man of the match or men of the match, anybody you felt like had a, had a really good showing? Gosh. Yeah. De, De Cure, uh just pu- pushing him, I mean, pushing him in that more attacking role, that role he played for Watford. I mean, that's why, I mean, I, I wanted him when he was at Watford. And, and we bought him. He's put in good shifts. I mean, you can't fault him for any shifts. I mean, he's always put in the work. I mean, he's always 
he's probably been one of the most hard hardest working players on the field, but um, he, he's just been so restricted. Uh, yeah. But you know, Rafa's kind of given him the reins to revert back to that Watford role, and man, was that exciting! I mean, yeah. that ball he played to Gray was a peach. I mean, I rewound it and showed my kids again. Just saying, it's... and we have somebody with the pace to get on that ball now. Yes, we do. Um, How quick I mean, is that kid? How quick is Mark Gray? I can't yeah, get over it. Like, his his first like five yards, by the way. It's amazing. the next uh, Everton in training needs to be Ben Godfrey, Damari Gray on the line. Who gets it? So, yeah, I mean, Gary Mina, another one, uh, just massive. Yeah. I think he won nine aerial duels, which against Burnley is against anybody's great. Yeah. But Burnley, that's that's phenomenal. Mm-hmm. Um, which, which I've always been Yeri's biggest fan. I, I think he's been our best center back since we signed them. Um, been kind of unlucky with injuries, but um, I, he's a guy I highly rate, which I know he's kind of a bit controversial in terms of people rating him. But to me, he, he's our guy. So I love the guy, you know, I think in the off season, I thought if we were going to sell any of them, I thought it may be him because of his sell, because the fact that he yeah. would bring money. Right. Mm-hmm. And I didn't want him to go. And, and so help me if I if I could just get him to to score and dance the way he did for Columbia. That's all I've been asking, you know, because I want to see those dances. I don't necessarily oh, yeah. need the Macarena that, you know, <laughs> I don't need that. But I, I want what he did for Columbia, like in the corner and everything. Oh, my God. It's all I've been asking for. You know, just a yeah. just, just a king year old dance. That's all. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. But I mean, um, he, he's great. And I think, you know, Townsend got the man of the match. Um, but I mean, what a goal. And yeah. it, uh, what, almost even better was the assist. Um, I mean, the assist to Keane, he, beat, he, I mean, he beat that man, played that ball perfect on a dime to Keane. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, we knew when he signed him, he was, he was good for, uh, you know, at least one screamer per season. Um, and uh, he's cashed in on that. So hopefully there's more. Yeah. Uh, fingers crossed hopefully that's not his one screamer but uh yeah. not what the guy's known for i mean he, he produces that wonder goal um and you know we got that and what a crucial goal so i don't know that i realized how like grounded and good of a dude he seems before we signed him i just yeah. didn't know you know um i will say being a player who, who tends to rely on his speed and him getting a little older it gave me pause. I'm hope I'm hoping he's he's able to. I just don't know if he's going to be an every game contributor. Uh, sure. If he's able to, good for him. Holy crap, ageless wonder. But uh, I, I think it's going to be hard. Uh, but um, we're getting a lot of good play out of him right now. And I know he was not a, a signing that was met with big time open arms from everybody. Um, I remember when we signed him, I was like, okay, cool. I think he's good for the team. I just don't know if he's our answer. You know yeah. what I mean? Um, which I think is a common common thought. Um, I, I, I'm glad he's kicking ass right now. I hope he keeps Oh, going, yeah. You know? I mean, it seems like a great guy. Yeah. Did you see his post-match interview about his mom? Yes. The shouts. Of, I mean, that was that was super cool. And yeah. I guess for those of you that didn't see that, um, basically, I guess the past few weeks, his mom put together a highlight reel or, or pulled one up of all of his best goals and basically said, you know, hey, you, you still got this in you, dig mm-hmm. deep. And so I think that's what the point was for, um, you yeah. know, when he celebrated. That's what uh, I thought too, he, yeah. He just credited that goal. Yeah. yeah. And it might have been his, his family that was in the box, but I think he, he said it was for his mom, mm-hmm. um, which I think is – I know his wife and kids were at the game. I don't know if his mom was there, but, um, you know, it was, just, it was just really cool. Um, but, you know, I totally agree. I think if Calvert Lewin's there, he doesn't start that match. Um, but you know, hopefully he can just push on and and you know be be a, an important player uh, for mm-hmm. us. And um, you know, um, we'll probably transition um, into it shortly. But uh, you know, we didn't sign a right winger, um, or, or at least one that you know would would be a, a first team, a first eleven player. Um, so, you know, I think we're going to have to rely on Townsend a bit more than maybe we anticipated. Mm -hmm. Um, but, um, you know, we're coming up against probably our primary target here this weekend. So. Yeah. Well, 
really quick about one of our targets we played against. How did you feel like uh, McNeil looked? January, next summer, whatever, whatever it takes. I mean, he is class. It me? And he is way too good <laughs> to be in that Burnley squad. Oh, yeah. I, I specifically kept an eye on him, and he's just smooth. He's very smooth. Yeah. I mean, he, he is – I think if there's one thing we're missing maybe from the squad right now, uh, which probably going to be some Hamas shouts uh, when it <laughs> comes to just – just that guy that you can just – and he, he's not pacey, not necessarily the most – have the most flair, but, I mean, he's mm-hmm. just good. You get him the yeah. ball and he, he gets it off his foot to who it needs to go to, he's good. So I, I think he'd be a fantastic addition to the squad. Very, very cool. Uh, yeah, I – he was one I was specifically eyeballing. So Too good um, for Burnley especially yeah. the way they play. He, he's just uh, kind of like Zaha Pal- Palace. Uh, just, I, I hope, I hope uh, McNeil doesn't have to spend his career at Burnley. Um, Cause I, I think he can go to a, a top side. I mean, and, and which maybe, maybe not call Everton a top side at this point, but I think we're certainly a step above Burnley and, and, He'll just he'll just be in a better side where he can play, you know, how he wants to play and not be so restricted in his play like he is at mm-hmm. Burnley. But sorry, Burnley fans, if you're listening, probably yeah, and the play. Palace fans too. Uh, <laughs> I mean, let's be real. Like he he's he knows he knows his worth. He's wanted to leave Palace for years now. Uh, he, uh, he it's what, like I I will he say, I feel like that. Palace is trying to assemble some young talent. Right now, you know, you look at some of the young players they're starting yeah, to sign. Good. They got some, they got some exciting players coming yeah. through. I don't know if they're quite matching up to Zaha yet, but at the same time, it seems like there's some intent, which is interesting. Burnley, I feel like, did just get some new owners, and they've got an inflect. Sure. You know, they they have an injection of cash, and they just haven't really done a lot of spending on it yet. So I'm curious as to yeah. when that's gonna start happening. So. No, def- definitely fair play to Palace though, um, in terms of. <laughs> It's getting the young squad. I mean, young manager. I think uh, you know Vieira's. I think he's he's definitely a project manager. Uh, mm-hmm. Definitely not somebody that's going to come in there and and get your results right away. But I think having him, getting those young players in, is. I mean, they definitely they're, they're bringing in bright talent. Um, so, Bell's fans, yep. you know, something to yep. be excited about. You're always curious about that excitement, though, because it's a me- mixture of excitement and consistency that is needed throughout a throughout a season right. you know what i mean yeah. and how how long can you ride that wave and how bad are the are the valleys how scary are yeah. they you know yeah. so there's, that's going to be the real test for them. Valid, so i think they'll be okay so we are we are uh anything else on uh on burnley yeah i i mean horrible first half but uh would love to you know gonna be watching that second half on replay for Probably years to come. I mean, that's, that was just awesome. <laughs> All right, everybody. So you've had the thoughts, the Burnley thoughts, but not so fast. We've got a mailbag coming right now, and the first questions are about the palace. Are about the palace. We start talking palace. And I say <laughs> the first questions are about the Burnley match. Um, I, and and as always, our first questions uh, are a moment with Bowsy Toffee Tits. Uh, Aaron Free, who was a guest a couple weeks ago, gives us his four questions, uh, three of which pertain to the Burnley match and the fourth one is to me. But uh, the first question is, we didn't get to talk about this much, which is, I'm glad. Uh, Honest assessment of Godfrey's first game back. I don't know if I can give one. Just that formation. I think the formation just didn't work. So it's it's tough to kind of criticize any one of the center backs playing in that formation. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's just something new. You, it's if we're gonna go with that, which um, I don't think we will. It just takes time to get used to, mm-hmm. and not training time, real match time. Um, 
so I just think it's harsh. And, and you know, they, he started in the middle and then got pushed to the left, I think, of uh, halftime, right? Keen and then going to the middle. But yeah. to me, I, I'm just going to say, you know, first game back for him this season, uh, we don't know his fitness levels. I mean, heck, the 60th, it, it, he may have come off for fitness reasons in the 60th minute, which, you know, is a pretty normal thing of, hey, you're not 90 minute ready, we're 60 minute ready. Uh, Maybe you'll see that a lot. So, uh, that that's my assessment um probably not what what you're looking for but no honestly uh, i don't i don't know that uh aaron's looking for any specific uh assessment here to be honest with you i think he's just looking for something fair and i think you were fair just then man um uh it's his, it's his first game back and he's playing in a different formation uh i think i saw some rust you know um some errant passes especially in the first half uh, you know, where it just seemed like he was just kicking it, um, which again, uh, you're, you're back playing for the first time in a while. It's your first time being in a, in a premier league match. I feel like that's natural. Um, there's nothing that happened in that game that makes me doubt him as a player and, and it has nothing has changed my mind on him period. I still yeah. think he's, he's amazing. And I think, uh, you could see he's going to start a bunch of games this season and we're going to be saying a bunch of really nice shit about him. That's just what's going to happen. You know what I mean? At, and he de- he'll deserve it. So there as well. Yeah. So uh, next question. You're going to love this one. Because I think you've already said it. Should Rafa ever play five at the back again? No. No, unless, like I said, the, the there's a few teams that are probably an exception. Um, but No. I will say if there are players he doesn't have confidence in defensively, like, you know, when, when we played five at the back in the cup match where we had, it was Nkunku on the left and John Joe oh. Kinney on the right. And we had okay. Holgate and Keen and who was it? Yeah. Oh yeah. It was Branthwaite. Yeah. And so there were a bunch of players who hadn't gotten a lot of play in time, um, you know? And so it was, for me, it was sort of a, you know, let's let's let, let's be safe for now and let those wingbacks get forward more and not have as much responsibility. But how do you how do you build consistency? Uh, I don't know. Yeah. I, I'm going to be okay if he does goes five at the back because I'm going to wait until he starts losing. Yeah, sure. I guess if that makes sense. I mean, I, yeah. I mean this. This was the, I mean, in reality, we've, we've played 60 minutes this season, maybe a little bit more uh, mm-hmm. when we were up, but um, I, I think, I think Rafa knew he got it wrong, possibly. Unless <laughs> Nobody that, unless likes that no, with the no <laughs> was exactly, who, I don't know, but uh, you know, we'll see. Um, I don't know if we necessarily have the depth to play the five at the back. All season, I mean, hopefully our center backs stay fit. But, I mean, in reality, I mean, if, if you're including Branthwaite, which is – is he ready? Um, we've got five center backs, so. Yeah. We should see. Yeah. Um, yeah, I I continue to sort of feel like five at the back does suit a player like Holgate. Um, sure. Oh, definitely, yeah. But um, – but yeah, and, and I, I like tactical flexibility when it comes to systemic flexibility. I guess that's the word I'm looking for. You know, be, uh, being able to, to play five and not, and not lose your head and not sit there and leak goals. It, it's cool to be able to do that. Um, it's just not a very, we play boring football when we roll five at the back. Oh, I yeah. think that's, very, very that's probably so. the, I, I'm just, yeah. I mean, if we are playing five, I would, like to see Godfrey, Mina, Holgate, but I just think Mina and Keen in a back five in the back three is just, ah, uh, it's just uh, questionable mm. at best. So, so uh, question three: What are the chances of ever being that happy on a Monday ever again? <laughs> slim, yeah, pretty pretty slim than not. I mean, not, uh, yeah. Usually, usually Mondays, uh, I guess in past seasons, were kind of where you get the refresh. You know, Everton ruins your weekend on a Saturday. You're still kind of getting over it on Sunday, and they're like, "All right, Monday's new week, another match day this weekend." But yeah, I mean, that was that was awesome. So yes. definitely cured any Monday blues. 
Absolutely. Um, you know, I don't know how many Monday night, Monday night football, y'all, uh, games that we have this season. I haven't checked. Um, I'll be honest, though, uh, right now going into going into games, I feel like we've got a good chance of winning pretty much any of them. You know, well, obviously we're not yeah. going to win every game this season, although hell of a season that would be. Uh, but at the same time, it's, you know, I, I, th I could, I think we could be that happy on a Monday again. I'm just going to say. I think that. so too. I yeah. I think the top, top teams this season have looked vulnerable. I mean, there's not a, I don't know if there's been an established kind of team yet. That's, you know, oh, they're going to run away with mm -hmm. the league. So I think, yeah, uh, it's a possibility. I think anybody's beatable. Aaron's last question is asking if my uh, my son can play right back. Um, <laughs> Aaron, uh, I will tell you right now, he normally plays center mid. He's left footed, has a pretty, his right foot is not quite as strong as his left, but it's strong. Right back is a stretch for him though. I'm just going to say it, Aaron. Uh, yeah, I don't know. He, I think he's, he's got a better chance of playing left back just because the left foot is so strong. But, you know, I'm sure he'd give it a shot. I just, I don't know, man. I don't know if he's quite ready to, to be right foot dominant all the time. Uh, Phil Blom did it. That's all I got to He say. really did, didn't he? <laughs> uh, all right. So next questions sent in via Reddit. Uh, this is from uh, a, 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 someone else who sent in questions before. Nine Yoshi Five asks, or says and then asks, uh, Townsend has scored from outside the box, something we haven't done for a while. Sigurdsson should have done that regularly, uh, or should have regularly delivered that to us. He did with Swansea and previous teams, but didn't really do it that often with us. Have we found our cheap Sigurdsson replacement in the form of Townsend? Um, I think if you're talking about goals outside of the box, temporarily, yeah. But again, we, I, I do think Sigurdsson had a little bit more staying power throughout the season because of his position and, uh, not in the fact that it doesn't rely on speed, his position, but I mean, already right now, I, I, how awesome if we, if he's given us, uh, I don't know if we get five crazy, you know, thunder bastards, of freaking season yeah. that's that's doing that's awesome if that happens yeah i mean i just agree slow down a bit, a bit maybe and not say <laughs> yeah not not rate Thompson that highly um but not yet. Not yet. i think he's also a guy that usually looks to pass first uh and mm -hmm. i mean he may have been bluffing the whole time but that's what he was doing that entire run was checking his shoulders to see if there's any options um mm -hmm. and then he just had a crack but um yeah, maybe. it was it was so subtle the shoulder checks too. You I said know, earlier he's he's good for about one one per season, so <laughs> hopefully there's more. But we if we can somehow get him to dip into the coffers just a few more times, I think it's it's just nice because I was thinking about uh you know our set plays you know Luca Dean sets up for a uh, you know um, we've got a uh, yeah and and they and they set the wall about seven or eight yards away. Um, and Dean puts it right into the wall. And I feel like in the past, Luca Dean was pretty reliable to at least put something close to frame. Mm -hmm. You know, we just haven't had a lot of opportunities like this that this season. Um, so it's interesting. So anyway. Um, so question two. Um, Hamas Rodriguez is still at the club. Whether he plays or not, shouldn't the club do more in terms of marketing? looking to increase club exposure and widen global appear, appeal. They did it at the start when signing him, but whilst we have him at the club still, we should try to max, should, uh, should we try to maximize the opportunity and exposure due to his international profile and reach? Interested to hear your thoughts. Cheers. Tough what do one. you do with that? Uh, I think the Hamas situation it's been unclear at the moment. Um, you know, if, if all the reports are true and, and my personal feelings was as soon as we got Rafa in, I thought that was in the Hamas. Uh, Me too. Pretty clear. They don't have a working relationship, um, at least in the past. Um, just the style of football that Rafa plays, uh, different from 
how hummus needs to be used. Mm-hmm. Um, and in terms of kind of the marketing aspect, me personally, and I think there was some other thoughts uh, amongst supporters, but um, wasn't a big fan of how it was handled uh, with the Florida Cup. Um, seemed a bit of a gimmick to me um, in that they promoted Hamas and the Colombian teams and all of that. Um, when in reality, which, which was prior in fairness to hiring uh, Rafa, but they continued to kind of promote that and make Hamas the poster boy. And as soon as the cup was over, Hamas to here, Hamas to there, Hamas does not want it, Hamas is available. Um, and so Honestly, I do think Rafa's made his intent to the club pretty clear. Yep. Um, now, he kind of contradicts that in a way by saying, oh, Hamas is available, blah, 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 blah. But where was he at Burnley? He's fit. Well, he's not even the squad. So yeah. we will see. It's hard to speak on that now. But I would rather not the club promote him um, if he has no future of being an actual uh, match player. I mean – how, how disappointing would that be to the new fans that buy a Hamas kit and never see him play but more than 15 minutes, um, you know, every now and then. So, yeah, that's my stance on it. You would like some marketing integrity is what it seems. Yeah. yeah. Um, I got to be honest, I, I thought the uh, – it, it, I agree. It was pretty transparent what was happening with Hamas in Florida. You know, I, I, I think uh, I, I hate to use the word gimmick, but I think you're right, dude. I think it totally was a gimmick. Yeah, that might you know have been more harsh. No, but, but I think it's true. That's what's that's the thing. I think it's I think they're you. I think they're doing what uh, and, Nine and, Yoshi and, Five is is saying though to you. In fairness, who he is right. In fairness to the club. I think a lot of pressure and a lot of it was done by the Florida cup um, mm-hmm. given that they brought in Colombian teams um, and it was kind of all, I mean, it was, it was even being there. I mean, it was a lot of it was, um, you know, about the Colombian clubs that were there mm-hmm. um, and, and they were there to see Hamas. They're there to see their club. Um, so maybe it was a gimmick on their end and, and the club just played along with it. But again, I mean, I, I would just kind of like some transparency. Why wasn't he selected for Burnley when mm-hmm. kind of Rafa has said that he is with the club, he's going to be with the club, you know, I'm going to play him, whatever. So mm-hmm. I don't know. It's a, it's an odd one. So uh, personally, with the way we're playing right now, I, I don't know if I want him in the squad. I mean, he's mm-hmm. it, it's going to change the way – it's certainly going to change our tactics. Um, yeah. you, kind of play with, you kind of play with nine um it's nine, just an old school play. number 10 right i mean yeah every time i think about him i think about a number 10 who creates so much but is really not giving you anything defensively and exactly. it's uh, it's heartbreaking because of what he creates and the the passes are just genius the little flicks on the ball are absolutely inspired but there's a whole other half of the game where you don't have the ball yeah, and, and I would say right now, if it ain't broken, don't fix it. So, um, <laughs> you know, maybe there's a point in the season where we're missing that bit of creativity. But, um, I mean, we've we've scored good goals this season. That's, that's another thing. Mm-hmm. Our goals in the past haven't been the best, but, like, we are scoring goals from open play. Um, it's also a yeah. lot of quick transitional goals, right? Like something yeah. that's coming. It's not a lot of – what we've done in the past, which is work the ball toward the, the box and then be unable to penetrate the box by passing the ball around. You know what I mean? Like it's it's a lot of like transitional fast break type of stuff with slashing players. And um, I think that gray goal is a perfect example of it. I mean, yeah. does Hamas have it in his bag to play the ball to Curry does? Absolutely. Probably even be a better ball. I mean, if it can be a better ball, but do we get the repressure and win it back with Hamas on the pitch yeah. that leads to that goal? Probably not. So that's um, good. I like that. Yeah, specific it's going to be something there. to follow. So good, good question there. But uh, it's a hard question because you're you're wanting you're wanting us not to be. I, I think a lot of people have built up. Uh, they feel like we should have done more with Howard 
as you know, in a, in the U.S. especially, I hear that a lot from a lot of uh, English folks, actually saying we feel like we should have a bigger footprint in America. It can be bigger. That's the thing. There's Evertonians showing up all over the place, and it can still it can still be bigger. You know, I think the club's going in the right direction, though. They're doing all the right things right now Definitely. Yeah. in terms of uh, what they're doing in the U.S. Um, so, yeah, uh, nine Yoshi five. It's a good question. Um, it's just going to be hard because I also I feel like there's a if we're trying to reach out to new fans, that's one thing, right? But if you're reaching out to blues and trying to get them inspired and everything, uh, Evertonians are usually not um, they can smell, uh, you know, when things are not right, you know, if they're being fed a lot, you know. Um, OK, this is just a funny one. Chicago Joe 1979 asks, where is the keen money? Keen money is probably not in the bank yet. Um, I mean, I think we, we got the payment from PSG. I think we got a nice little loan fee. Um, but then I think the Juve money is kind of spread. Um, I guess they, they're kind of notorious for doing that two year loan uh, and, then, and then paying the money. So um and that was also probably late in the window um we'll get money i mean we'll get good keen money i mean i think a lot of people criticize brands for keen i i find that harsh uh clearly a heck of a talent just didn't settle mm -hmm. into the prim um I, i'm gonna attribute that to poor management uh still pretty unhappy with duncan ferguson um uh, for that stunt uh, but just didn't think he settled in. Uh, but I mean, we made a profit on him and that's kind of all you can ask mm -hmm. for, especially when he's a surplus to the club. So, mm -hmm. um, where's the keen money coming? <laughs> yeah, that's what I was going to say. I feel like it's, uh, it's burning a hole in, uh, in bronze's wallet right now. He's, yeah. he's figuring something out. I feel pretty good. I don't know if it's going to be the winter though. I don't know if we're going to see it in the winter. Right, winter is just End a of the day, crap window. Uh, glad we didn't panic buy. I mean, really. Agreed. Agreed. We spent 1.5 uh, this window, and I mean, so far so good. I'm still worried about our depth. Um, I will say. I think oh, when the certainly. window comes along, I think we'll see a couple loans, one or two, tops, maybe something yeah. cheap a purchase but nothing big but prices are so far up it's just a crap window it's awful yeah uh big question mark right now but i think Abamin is uh i hope i mean he was he was great at mines um hope he can mm -hmm. get back to that form and and i just don't know it's, it's just question mark right now been on the bench look mm -hmm. decent in the preseason but um you know we'll see but if i mean if we can get minutes out of him that's that's huge how cool would that be? that'd be awesome would, love to see a three of Gabam and Allen and the career. I mean, just absolute bruisers in the middle. Yeah. Great. Yeah. I do get a goofy grin. Just saying. <laughs> uh, so 502 to 334 and back asks, what's your favorite bourbon? And the second half of the question, God. I think I know this answer, but I'm not sure. Actually, no, I don't, considering where you're from. Second part is cats or cards? Dang. So this sounds like a local because it's the 502. That's, that's the little area code. I had a feeling. All right. My first answer is E.H. Uh, e. Taylor. Um, that's a, uh, it's made by Buffalo Trace. It's my favorite. Um, I don't know. It's, I'm a very, every now and then bourbon guy mm -hmm. uh, but E.H. Taylor would be my pick um, and then uh, in terms of cats or cards oof, grew up a massive cats fan uh, then did undergrad at UofL now at UofL law school uh, did team manager for the UofL men's soccer team oh, um, so there, 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 there's my fun fact uh, did that for that's a season. good that's awesome uh, so uh and again, gosh, this is going to disappoint a lot of people in the state. But as my love for Everton has grown and my love for just watching soccer, my enjoyment of watching football and basketball has decreased. 
So I have oh, gotten mine to the point too, where, dude. That's yeah. awful to say out loud, right? Yeah, oh. but I'm at the point where, uh, I mean, gosh, I'll come out and say it. If UK was playing U of L, I'm going for UK. But I mean, I'll go, I'll go to U of L football games. Uh, you know, I'll. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's just it's kind of Everton at this point. I mean, my room's all all things Everton, not not a glimpse of uh, cards or cats. So, sorry, five oh two two. I missed the second part, but and back, but to three three four. If you're back, if you're back, you're probably in the group. So, um, <laughs> who is it? Reveal yourself. But, sorry. By the way, uh, the, the there was a response underneath that one by QT Sex Kitten that said. Cards stink for a multitude of reasons, but the largest by far is that their mascot is a bird with teeth. <laughs> and, yeah, they uh, got a lot of uh, criticism for that. They like rebranded <laughs> and had the car logo with teeth in it. So, yeah. So, um, gotta say, uh, being uh, an ACC fan, uh, for the longest time, I, I really didn't like either one of them. And then Louisville starts, you know, all of a sudden becomes a, you know, part of the conference, you know, and it really throws you off. <laughs> They're good for a while. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, it's, and there, uh, and, uh, but yeah, I, I lean toward Louisville for very, I mean, it's a slight leaning though, slight. Um, yeah. Mainly also, you know what, Louisville? Louisville has has a has a train that goes behind their field, and that's awesome for soccer. Are you referring to Lynn Stadium? Have you, have yes. you been? You I've, no, I've watched games on no. TV. Yeah, yeah. So I'm saying you're, you're Wake Forest. Yeah, yeah. So that, I mean, that was all good matchups. There you go. Yeah. So they're good. Kim Lola. They're good. Kim Lola. Good uh, I went to high school with Kim Lola's son. So. Oh. Um, followed the UL soccer team for for years, and that's you know, awesome. Like, so yeah, very cool. Yeah, they're they've got a they've got a good program there, man. They really do. Actually, the my my kid, the first game I ever my kid was ever like a mascot walking out with the team was like two two years ago. He walked out with uh, the Louisville keeper, and it was just oh, yeah, yeah yeah it was cool yeah. So nice. Anyway, all right, so. Last Reddit question, and then we have Toffee Blues John's questions. Do you think, okay, Blue Indian 2008, do you think Carlos' stint at Everton removed him from world-class manager status? I mean, no. Uh, he's back. Uh, I don't like to speak on him very much, but back in Madrid, and, I mean, they just got a result today, and kind of a bit of a project with that squad, which is kind of weird to say being at Madrid, but um, no, I don't, I don't think so. I mean, I don't think so either. No. Yeah. I agree uh, with you. Let's move yeah. on. Uh, I'm done with him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't think it was even long enough to really merit anything like that anyway. So um, I think it's an interesting conversation topic for two, maybe two people who aren't, damaged by it happening but uh <laughs> we're we're not huge huge fans of the situation i would say but uh but yeah so. if you saw his contract out then you can look at how he did there um because obviously if he kept finishing mid table until the end of his contract then yeah maybe that is a conversation you have but then you know if it goes the plan and he gets everton back in europe um, you know, then that is that kind of cements that world class manager. But, anyways, that's Carlo. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. kind of. Yeah, uh, kind of forgot who he was. Last, last thing. Last. Thing. Okay, that's nice. That's good. Well done, Cole. That's <laughs> one for you, Cole. All right. That's it. so. Uh, my random Norm McDonald reference. Oh, so. Uh, but yeah. Um. So John Toffee Blues John asks, what was the Everton signing that disappointed you the most? Disappointed me the most. Um, gosh, there's a handful of guys. I mean, just like in recent times, uh, you know, Sandro, Chank, Tosin, 
Um, he's been a bit unlucky, I think. Uh, I mean, he's he goes back to Besiktas and he scores goals. So, uh, you know, David Klassen's another one. Um, no, you know who disappointed me the most was uh, – yeah, I mean, well – in terms of how to play it out, Moise Keane, uh, that's an easy one oh. for me. Um, the signing itself uh, was – I was over the moon, but, again, just poor management of him. Uh, doesn't help when you come in under Marco. He gets fired. Um, yeah. You know, he gets sacked halfway through, and then he got a new manager. We got a caretaker in, in David uh, Duncan Ferguson. And, uh, yeah, that, that, that still is just uh, – I, I think that's one miss. So. You can lump mm-hmm. him with the group of Nikola Vlasic and Adam Olukman. Um, mm-hmm. Those three to me, you know, you have the group of Sandro, David Klassen, the older guys that just probably can put it on the Premier League. Sandro just wasn't that good. But, uh, Sandro crushed me, dude. I was so excited watching his highlights and watching – watching him play U21 World Cup. Yeah. And I was like, this guy is going to be the mustard. And oh, my God. Yep. That was End of the day, such a disappointment. Be, oh, my God. I think I think the group of Vlasic and Lookman and Moise Keen, the young guys, I mean, especially Vlasic and Moise Keen, Adam O. Lookman, decent season with Fulham. But, um, yeah, disappointing. And, and, and I think – if anything you learn from uh, the um, our, our new sign, Damari Gray, you can't write off young players. I mean, yeah. I think Damari Gray was written off by just about every Leicester fan, yep. um, probably most Byron Leverkusen fans. Um, but hopefully, I mean, I don't want to you know praise them too much too soon, yeah. but um, you know, just just bad bad management of Vlasic and Luckman and uh, hopefully uh, Anthony Robinson is not one that comes back to bite us in the butt, the, the young American. Yeah, but. I love that kid. Jedi. But uh, I, 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 I just miss Vlasic's sister's interactions on Twitter, you know. She was fun, I'm just going to say. She was a fun lady. All right. Uh, yeah, I, that one dis- did disappoint me because I thought he saw a lot of promise. And I thought we never used him in a way that I thought, you know, really uh, accentuated his quality. Um, it was pretty frustrating watching him play under us. Sandro killed me just because I got it so wrong, personally. I got I it wrong, you know. Um, that one that one killed me. Debbie, Debbie Clawson, for some reason, I saw that one coming. I don't know why. Um, I, felt, I felt like I, I knew what we were – getting on that uh just because i think the first time i saw him play a game i was like all these legs look skinny you know what i mean i was like he doesn't yeah, look like it, somebody. <laughs> i don't know uh there was, there was something that came out this week i think an ix manager i don't know it's just he was played out of position and just the fast paced league are are i mean almost worse than getting a manager every season really for the past you know four or five years it's just we have we haven't been able to give the guys that need time to settle in time to settle in which which to me has been one of the most disappointing things so um yeah and and the the question is are some of those players like i don't know i i would also i would question some of the choices that we make that and whether or not they were worth having time to settle in in the first place you know what i mean like it's like on paper they seem okay but i don't know i i I feel like for the most part bronze has a pretty decent eye for who will oh sure work in the premier league at some point which is i I find it really hard to fault him for any of his signings at least um i think there are very valid excuses when you bring up names like andre gomez fabian delph um, in terms of who he has signed, uh, mm-hmm. that he has very valid excuses of where those went wrong. But I forgot that Delph was on our squad. I totally <laughs> forgot about him, Cole. That is I our uh, God. He was our a backup thing. left back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're right. <laughs> or Ben Godfrey, one that, of the two. That just 
that just hit. I'm sorry. You were just naming players, and I was it just like a like a like a lightning bolt in the brain, like Delph. You know, like he's those are the two I hear the most. Fabian Delph. You bring him in for eight mil to be a veteran in a team that doesn't have many. Be a role player. He gets injured all the time. I mean, not really predictable. Andre Gomez suffers a what could have been a career ending injury and doesn't yeah. come back the same player, which he's put in some decent shifts this season. So, you know, maybe it's just a mental thing. I don't know, but uh, most disappointing Moise Keen. Cool. Uh, and the last question from John, what's your favorite breakfast and drink included? You could make it a drink, but what's your favorite breakfast? Interesting question. I mean, maybe it's uh, breakfast food. Like or some maybe eggs Benedict. Yeah. I don't know. Favorite breakfast. Eggs Benedict, yeah. yeah. So uh, that, and I guess uh, if we're talking early match days, definitely go with the Guinness. So, mm. I, I, I like a Benedict as well, but it's usually. Uh, I remember the restaurant I used to work at used to have a steak tenderloin Benedict. Oh, and that was banging. Yeah. Um. So good. Uh. And if there's any kind of potatoes involved. Um, it's like I'm not a big fan of hash browns that are like chunky, you know what I mean? Those like, the, like yeah, for some yeah. reason it's the just shredded. overly it's gotta filling. Go Gotta go shredded. It's very Waffle House style, the shredded, you know, uh, and pre preferably a little crispy. You know what I mean? I don't like them like too white. I like them browned and shredded. Closest and can, to burnt possible. Yes. Yeah. You know, <laughs> give me a little bit of extra flavor um yeah and i um and i i drink coffee black black coffee dude just I actually i actually made the comment at the burnley match it was i mean word for word if waffle house had tvs that would be our meetup that would be where we watch matches <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I i what's funny is i haven't been to a waffle house since i was in college oddly enough uh but i was there Many weekends after the bar, <laughs> yeah. So a good spot to do to do matches for sure. But I I, I had many a uh, bacon egg and cheese on toast sandwich there. TVs yeah. and beer. That that was the two requirements. But unfortunately, <laughs> no TVs or beer at Waffle House. Either one, but you know what is probably a pretty damn good thing that Waffle House oh, does so beer. <laughs> God, what an awful idea. <laughs> I have enough uh, crazy stories from other patrons as it is. Don't need to add uh, alcohol <laughs> to the mix there. So, all right. So that is our mailbag done with that one. Last thing, Villa preview. We can wrap this up. I'm just gonna yep. rattle off a bunch of stuff about Villa here. And if you got anything uh, to mention, uh, chime in, dude. Go for um, it. Current form, they're twelfth, uh, one one and two with four points. Most recently, they took a three nil loss to Chelsea. Um, Gosh, that ball played into Lukaku for the first one was sickeningly good. I just had to say that out loud. Um, before that, they drew 1-1 with Burnley. Before that, they had a 6-0 win in the Carabao Cup over Barrow. And before that, a 2-0 win over Newcastle. Um, possible lineup. I think they get their keeper back. Um, Martinez, I believe he's back. And, you know, ever since he talked trash to Yerry Mina, I don't know if I can look at him the same way. I've always liked that guy. And it should probably make me like him more anyway. He just seems kind of like a badass. I like him. Um, uh, Matthew Cash, Esri Kansa, uh, Mings, and Matt Target probably running up that back line. Buendia, what a purchase. Uh, heck of a player. Um, he'll probably be starting uh, on the right. McGinn, uh, Douglas Luis, and maybe Ashley Young. Don't know. There's a few players you never can tell. They have a lot of talent on this team it's just i think they're still trying to figure it out is my guess i hope they don't do that against us and you can see ings and watkins two players that frankly have no problem finishing leon bailey on the bench uh, potentially or starting bertrand triore similar thing they're they got they got players dude yeah and and this is the kazoo derby but yes. it's also i feel like the uh Everton versus Everton's former targets uh, derby as well. So there's, there's a few um, of those. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's, <clears throat> I think they get uh, Morgan Sanson um, back. I think he's, he's fit. Um, I think they get him back this weekend, but again, Leon Biley, Traore, I feel like we were linked to a bit. Um, 
you know, and, and I think they are, they are currently figuring out life without Jack Grealish. Um, yeah. And that is quite the task. Um, and, and that's what it has looked so far. Um, they've they've kind of looked like they haven't known what to do without them. Um, Buendia mm-hmm. is obviously that um, number 10 to come in and, and replace that and scored a, scored a screamer um, his last match um, prior to Chelsea. Yeah. Um, I guess they scored versus Chelsea. Was that? Uh, no, they didn't score on Chelsea. Was it against Bur- Brentford? Yes. It, the, be it. Yeah. It okay. the, the Brentford match. Yeah, that's what I thought. Three overs Chelsea, the, the one prior to it. So yeah. But yeah, I mean, they just they didn't look uh they just didn't look like they knew what to do. Um, mm-hmm. you know, without Jack versus versus Chelsea, but it's also Chelsea, keeping that in mind. So but yeah. uh yeah, I mean Leon Bailey uh heavily linked to him. Um I was a, a big fan. Um Me too. my concerns with him though in the Premier League. Um, just kind of watching CONCACAF, you know, kind of known for being a physical fast paced yeah. league. Um, his, his, he hasn't made that many appearances for Jamaica. Um, I think he's had disputes with the Federation, but, hmm. um, hasn't had much return for them. Um, hmm. but, uh, yeah, I mean, we'll see if he can settle in. Hopefully it's not versus us. Um, he had a crazy, crazy, just sequence to get out of the corner versus Chelsea though. Um, I didn't see that. So just, just a combination of skill and speed, which I mean, yeah, it's, it's uh, you know, we, we got gray from Byron Leverkusen. They got uh, Leon Bailey. So uh, let's see who comes out on top. Um, Cause Derby rounds one round one of the season. Yeah. Villa are a team who seem like they have a lot of pieces. Uh, and I'm not, I'm, I'm wondering how long it takes them to gel um, and if they can get that figured out. Because, I mean, they do have two strikers who can consistently finish <clears throat> and play different styles. Um, they're interesting. Uh, they've got some talent on the ball. Uh, it's, it's just a team that uh, could be scary if they figure things out. You know what I mean? Um, Maybe I'm giving them too much respect. I feel like they've, but I don't think they put it together yet. So maybe I'm not, you know, um, I think they seem a little disjointed. Uh, but again, you know, you, it's hard to say what you're going to get from us. Um, what do you think? We roll in four in the back this, this game from the start? Yeah, I think so. I think, I, so I think we take it to them. So, um, yeah, I, th- I think we go right at them. Mings has looked pretty shaky, uh, pretty bad giveaway versus Chelsea. So, um, yeah, I think we take it to them and, um, you know, in a way match. So let's, let's see, um, see what happens. So, yeah, I like, uh, I'll go two one Everton. I also am picking two one Everton right there. There we go. (laughs) (laughs) Same thing. Uh, by the way, just really quick, rattling off the starters, I think we could – I mean, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, I feel like there's a few po- other possibilities, but I think we're thinking Pickford, Coleman, Mina, Keane, Dean for that back line. Yeah? Um, yeah. Maybe Godfrey over Keane, but maybe I don't know if you can take Keane out. It's hard to say right now. Uh, and uh, if there's no – if we go four in the back, and if there's no DCL back, which I, I don't believe he'll be back yet, then I think you could see Andre Gomes uh, and Alan or Alan and uh, Decore starting in the middle, and then Townsend, Richarlison, and Gray. Um, mm-hmm. Could see Godfrey in there. Could see a Wobi in there, and could see a, a an appearance late in the game, maybe by uh, Rondon. Could see it, yeah. And, and is this the match that uh, Gabama gets thrown in there for his uh, hey. Premier League? Yeah, <clears throat> I don't know. Could happen for Gomes. I don't know. Could happen. I'd love to see us. It would be cool to get a little bit of a lead and need to protect it. And we take out, take out Gomez and uh, uh, Gabamin goes in to help defensively. Because I feel like I would trust him defensively, you know, more than <clears throat> Gomez. But yeah, dude. Delph's our guy for that. <laughs> Stop it. Stop talking about Delph. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, dude. Okay. Well, we got two, uh, two, three point predictions from, uh, from me and Cole here. 
both the same score. Really quick, give me one goal score out of curiosity. Charleston gets his goal. <clears throat> gets it. Cool. Cool. Let's see here. Looking at these players, uh, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna be a little just because he was so close to scoring last match, and because he's scoring this season, Decore. Like it. One one like Decore it. goal. Let's do it. All right. So, uh, Cole, that's the show. We have Thanks finished. for having me. Been yeah, man. No, I uh, appreciate you coming on. This has been really fun. Uh, you know, hope you can do it again sometime. Cole, do you have any? Do you have any like? late show shout outs you want to you want to throw out there anything any information you want to give for kentucky evertonians anything at all yeah just shout out shout out to everton kentucky um if you're a everton kentuckian uh watching this and you haven't been to saints yet or shamrocks go to saints um unless you don't feel comfortable to do so that's totally fine but when you do come to saints um we have quite the group um good atmosphere uh, good people, good food. Um, but yeah, uh, just pleasure having me and just, uh, all you North American toffees watching this and the toffees abroad, uh, up the toffees. I mean, um, hopefully, hopefully we can push for those, uh, top European spots this season and, um, you know, get us back to where we deserve to be. So nice bourbon slush, Buffalo chicken Boom. pizza. Boom. Clacky. Just say halo Our, sauce. Halo sauce, ladies and gentlemen. All right, very cool. So let me let me finish with the spiel uh, for all you uh, for all you folks out there who've been listening and watching the show. If you're digging what you're uh, hearing and or seeing, please subscribe to the Top of Blues YouTube channel and or podcast. We'd really appreciate it. Um, uh, please uh, follow the Top of Blues on Twitter, and Instagram, and Facebook, and check out the Top of Blues new website design. It's pretty. And there's a whole lot of cool stuff on there, a lot of content, all things Everton, from some content producers who've been been supporting the Blues, a uh, bunch of them since birth. And uh, and uh, somehow they let me hang out with them in their chat group on Twitter. I don't know why, but they do. I guess it's like I'm token old dude. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's it. Uh, Cole, thanks so much, man. Thanks for coming on and... Uh, yeah, man. So many, uh, some thoughtful stuff you contributed and we just really appreciate it. Absolutely. Thanks again for having me. All right. And uh, everybody else out there. Um, yeah. I just uh, appreciate three points. Um, let's kick some ass this weekend. Come on, you blues. All right. Much love everybody. Bye.